So in this video we'll be writing our first Python code as well as Java code. So we have installed Python, we have installed Java and we have also installed brackets on our computer. So now we are ready to go. We are ready to write our first code using Java and Python in brackets, right? So let's start with Java. So you can open brackets uh, from your start menu um, and you can just go to file and click on new to, cre to create a new window like this. So since we are writing this in, uh, uh, sorry, since we are writing this in Java, uh, we want to save the file as .java. We have to save the file as .java. For example, if you're saving the file as uh, hello you have to save it as hello dot java just uh, you know dot java is basically an extension just like dot exe or dot zip dot java is also an extension that is read by the java compiler right right so yeah before getting this started i'm actually going to create a new folder on my desktop uh, which i'll be using uh, uh, throughout this video lecture so that i'll be able to save all my code files in this folder so i i recommend you uh, to also create a folder like this so that you get to save all the codes all the codes that you have written in a single folder like this and that will be really 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 helpful like you can divide the folder into subfolders right right so let me create the folder as um, learn programming right I'm creating the folder as that and let me create another subfolder inside this like I'll say first code right first code now uh, before writing before starting to write code in brackets i recommend you to first save the file so that you know brackets will be able to interpret your code as a java source code and it will be able to show you all the formatting and all that stuff so basically you just go to file and click on save as or you can just click Control s on your keyboard now go to the folder which you have created which is uh, learn programming and first code and now I'm going to save this as hello and as I've told you you have to use the extension .java here so just type in hello.java and uh, make sure that the type is set to all files right and now you can just click on save and there we go we have uh, successfully saved uh, the file hello.java in here we have not written any code yet but we have saved the file first now let's start writing the code so um, I'm going to sh I'm going to you know uh, show you a template which you will use for every Java code that you will be writing in this video lesson or in this video course whole video course right so the template is as follows first of all you have to declare a class so you need to use the keyword class now uh, class and let me name the class as sample and you have to you know open flower brace and as soon as you type in open flower brace you can also see the closed flower brace comes up automatically once again that's what the brackets does and you can hit enter and it nicely gets uh, indented like that so you don't need to you know you don't need a space here uh, because Java doesn't actually care about indentation but it actually makes your kind uh, your code look beautiful or nice you know not dirty right so class sample first of all you need to uh, declare a class so I have declared the class using the cl uh, keyword class and sample now yeah this might be confusing and you might ask me what is this class what is this sample but just keep watching I will I will tell you all about uh, these keywords uh, after I write the code right so first of all declare the class and how you declare the class is you say class and then a class name this sample uh, is not a f is not a Java reserved keyword which means you can give anything you like you can give your name over here whatever you like right but there are some restrictions as to what the class name can be so so once you have declared the class you need to type in a open flower bracket and a closed flower bracket now everything every every statement every line that goes in between this open and closed flower brace belongs to this class sample right so everything that you type here is actually belonging to this class sample right so now once you have uh, declared a class you have to declare a function within this class and remember this java program 
always starts with the main function so in order to declare this main function as I've told you this is a template which means you kind of have to uh, remember this remember this template so that you will be able to use this template for literally every program that you'll be writing in Java in this video course right so next you have to say you have to declare a main method because as I've told you Java program always requires a main method because the, in, the execution starts from the main method so in order to declare the main method you have to go like public static void main and open and closed uh, parenthesis like this and within this open and closed parenthesis you have to type in string args and open and closed square braces and after this you need to type in another open and closed flower brace like this and hit enter now everything that goes within this open and closed flower flower braces belongs to this method main and also to this class sample right so this is what I'm talking about this is the template that you will be using to write every Java program so whatever the code you want to write uh, you have to write it here starting from here start your code from here so this is a template that you'll be using to write Java code right so um, so now since I have told you what the template is let me talk about each and every keyword that is mentioned here first of all the class keyword so as I've told you the class keyword it's it's actually used to declare a class so we are using this class keyword to declare the class sample and as I've told you already sample is not a Java reserved keyword which means you can use any name I can just put Teja over here I can just put anything any string over here but it has its own restrictions right uh, and then this open and closed flower braces it is required uh, whenever you you are declaring or whenever you are starting a class you are required to type in an open and closed flower braces so that Java compiler as I've told you earlier a compiler is a program that checks the syntax it checks the grammar of the code that you have written and it, it gives you the error uh, if you have any faults in the grammar or in the syntax right so what what this tells what this open and closed flower braces tells the compiler is that it tells that everything that goes in between this open and closed flower braces belongs to this class sample so this class sample holds all of this code so that's what it tells that's what the open and closed flower braces tell the compiler and then once you have uh, declared the class you need to uh, declare or you need to start a main method so main method is basically the point where the execution of the program begins so whatever how many how many ever methods you have in, inside this class sample for example you can have another method here so let me say you can have another method that says public static void teja which is my name right uh, uh, and and once again this this goes with uh, open and closed flower base like this so how many ever methods you have like this the execution of the program always begins with the main method which means your the code that is written inside this main method always gets executed first and then uh, talking about this public static void main so public is an access specifier which means this specifies whether this method main uh, is accessible by other methods for example teja is another method in the class sample uh, we call this method or we also call it function so functions and methods both are the same right so this thing public is an access specifier at, and it specifies whether main the method main can be accessed by other methods such as teja inside the class or whether it can be uh, accessed by other methods which are defined in other classes for example if i if i just go uh, copy this thing and if I say sample 2 and I'll just delete the main method here and I'll say test here so uh, this access specifier public uh, it specifies if this main method can be accessed by this method which is named as test so test is a method which is declared in another class uh, notice that this this method test is actually defined within the class sample2 
not within the class sample the class sample ends here with this flower brace on the line 14 right so that's what this access specifier do it actually indicates whether a method or a variable is uh, or you know whether it can be accessed by other variables or by other methods or by other classes right so we don't need this second class over here right so we don't need the second class over here so right that's uh, that's how you and, uh, and also we don't need this second method over here because this is just a hello world program that we're going to write now and static is uh, we'll learn about static in our future video lessons but uh, right now just remember that this is a template and void is basically a data type and we'll also learn what this is in our uh, upcoming video tutorials and main as i've told you is the name of the method right so and one other another thing that you need to remember is that main method cannot be private or it cannot be protected it must always be public you have to always use the keyword public uh, uh, when you are doing when you are declaring main method and you also have to use static and void you have to make the main method a static method and also you have to make it a void uh, which means uh, void be means basically empty when it comes to uh, when you if you search it on the english dictionary and we'll be talking about void uh, more about void in the next video lessons so basically this is the template that we use to run a java code right uh, so basically this is the template that we use for any java code that we'll be writing so yeah it'll be great if you memorize this template or you can understand this template based on what i've told you i've ex explained to you what each keyword means and what it does right so in this video we'll be just printing hello world to the output so in order to print hello world what you need to do is type in system dot out dot println and then open and close flower braces and inside this uh, you need to type in a double quote and an open and close double quote like this and you can type in hello world and make sure that you always end any statement inside this uh, flower brace with a semicolon so any statement has to end with a semicolon in java that is the part of the syntax and if you don't end any statement with a semicolon it results in a compilation error so yeah you have to always terminate a statement with a semicolon it tells the java compiler that this statement has ended so anything that comes after the semicolon is treated as a new statement right and also i forgot to mention what's about what what's this string args so uh, basically anything that goes in this open and closed uh, braces is the parameters for this function right so in this case the parameter for this main function is args which is of the type string so string is a data type and we'll be learning more about data types in our upcoming videos so basically what we're doing is uh, this thing args holds the system arguments uh, that are passed uh, during the command line right so yeah i know this doesn't make any sense if you're a beginner and you don't know what's meant by a system argument but yeah you'll be uh, you'll be knowing it very well uh, in the upcoming video so please don't uh, don't feel terrified don't feel demotivated if you don't understand what's going on here i just want you to remember this template over here uh, because you'll be using this template uh, for any java code right and in order to print a statement you have to use system.out.println and followed by open and closed flower braces and inside this open and closed flower braces you have to type in any string which you want to print and make sure when you are typing any string inside this you have to enclose the string with an with a double quotes like this just like this and you can type anything in here so now that we have successfully written our first code it's time for us to actually compile this code and run this code right so in order to do that open your command prompt because uh, because we'll be compiling and running this code through our command prompt you can also use an ide but uh, since we are just beginning uh, it's better to use command line command prompt right so first of all open your command prompt and go to the directory where your you you have saved this uh, dot java file that you have just written so it's on my desktop i'll go to cd desktop slash uh, learn programming uh, which is my uh, the folder that you have, that i have created and then uh, it's first code 
right so once you have uh, once you go to that directory you can just type in a dir to see all the files inside it and there you go hello.java is one of the file inside that so i list uh, compile this code and in order to compile this code you have to use the java compiler and you have to uh, use the java compiler like this so java c stands for java compiler followed by a space and then the name of the file which is hello.java right so java c space hello.java and hit enter and that's going to compile your file and if your file or if your code has any syntactical mistakes uh, it it shows you the mistake over here since my code doesn't have any mistake any syntactical mistake uh, it doesn't show any error but if your code has any syntax errors it shows you uh, right here right so we have successfully uh, compiled our java code now let me go to the folder and here you could see this is the hello.java file that you have written and you can see a new file right here which says sample.class so sample actually came from this name of the class that we have defined so that's why it says sample over here and sample.class what what does this mean well this contains the byte code right so this contains the byte code as i've told you earlier compiler trans uh, translates a uh, source code which is this thing this thing is a source code so it translated this thing this source code into an intermediate code called as a byte code and it has saved it in the file sample.class so this byte code right here can be executed by the java virtual machine and uh, then it can be run it can be understood by, by our computer's processor and then uh, the output we will be able to get the output so now we have to actually make our java virtual machine to execute this sample.class file and in order to do that you have to type in java uh, and then space the name of the file so it's a sample and do not mention dot class at the end here because uh, it does it gives an error if you mention dot class at the end just say java followed by the class uh, followed by the name of the file without the extension dot class and hit enter and there we go hello world is actually printed over here so we have successfully printed hello world and let me change the statement uh, let me change this to namaste world right so this is basically uh, an indian way of saying uh, you know an indian way of saying uh, hello if you don't know if you're indian you already know that so once again if you change your source code even a tad bit you have to recompile your code and that creates a new dot class file a new byte code which can be run by the java virtual machine so i'm going to once again uh, compile my code by saying java c hello dot java and hit enter it's compiled now it's time to run java sample and it still says hello world well wait wait a minute did i actually save the file well so namaste world right now let me type in java hello dot java right and i say java sample yeah there we go we have seen the changes now namaste world so the change is updated here so you can print whatever you want here so yeah that's how you print anything to uh, the output so uh, that's how you actually print out things in java you have uh, successfully written your first code in java programming language now let's move on to python